Good afternoon, um, everybody, and um, welcome to Pitch Perfect webinar. And a big thanks to the Design and Crafts Council of Ireland, Ema and her team, for having me, um, give me this opportunity today to talk to you um, all about uh, public relations in the print, digital, online, and broadcast media in Ireland. Also, I'll touch on the UK and the USA. So it's a, it's a wonderful opportunity and thank you. I um, hope everyone is keeping well. Um, we're all in very strange times. I think personally and from a business perspective as well, it's very, very difficult for everybody. But look, we will get through all of this and hopefully you'll find the presentation today useful. And I'll just run through um, a little bit about what I'm going to uh, touch on. And then after the presentation, you can either ask me questions on chat, I think Emer explained that to you, or alternatively, please feel free to, to give me a call or email me jenny at revolve.ie. No problem. So I'm going to start off um, today with um, a first slide which is talking about what is PR. Then I'll touch on um, how do you get, how do I get my brand out there or message key points out there into the press in Ireland, the UK and the USA. So I'll touch on those. Um, how we, com we communicate stories. It's all about telling a compelling story, um, whether that's about a brand or the history of the company, but I'll go through that with you. Um, also, we would help uh, quite a few companies, um, small, medium enterprises, um, through, through difficult times in general. We had a few years ago the uncertainty of what Brexit may bring. Um, back in um, 2009, 2010, we had the recession, and now we're going through this pandemic, which has really thrown up so much uncertainty for us all. So it's just about regrouping and looking at um, what we can do to, to get through and um, keep, af keep afloat, really. Um, we'll touch on never waste a crisis, benefits of PRs, of PR for small, medium enterprises, and then about digital. Just to really give you a quick overview as to the type of brands that we work with. So, so Revolve is in business since 2004. Um, we work with uh, brands in different space, in different sectors, so in uh, fashion, beauty, interiors, lifestyle, food and drink. So really all retail brands um, um, and we, we specialize in advisory, we specialize in, in writing the press release to get that message out there to the journalists. But what I'll go through today is how you can do this. Um, and I suppose really just utilizing the wonderful support that the Design and Crafts Council of Ireland offer with their uh, excellent workshops and mentoring services that they provide. So don't, don't forget to, to keep in touch with them because they know what they're doing. And Emer and her team are just excellent at what they do. And again, we're here to, to, to help as well if you have any questions. So feel free to, to give me a call or my team a call. So the brands that we work with, you'll see there um, a number of Irish brands, but also international brands. Um, so uh, the Irish brands and international, I suppose pretty much we all have the same um, objective in that they want brand recognition. Um, they want to obviously target the right demographic. Uh, but also, I think at the end of the day, it's all about um, generating sales. But really what's important, it, the sales will come. Um, it's about really placing your brand and your brand's message in the history of your company maybe out there so that the public can actually see that the reader it's what use what's useful to to the reader um, so okay so just moving moving uh, forward as i said mentioning some of the brands that we've worked with some are irish field day a candle brand we work with remington which is their hair grooming which is so perfect at the moment for for us all grooming our hair at home um, McGee uh, Clothing and Donegal, um, Thomas Sabo Jewellery, uh, Green Angel, a beautiful skincare brand, um, so, so, and Wears and Sons. So a lot of these brands are, are retail, but also sell online. So that's really important, and I'll touch on that shortly. So I suppose really what is PR, and that's a big, big question I think people ask. They, you know, it can be confusing and why it is beneficial to small, medium enterprises. So we, we all we all need it. Even we need it in our business, in, in Revolve as a marketing and public relations agency. We need our own PR. 
So it's, it's really just to run through what it's about. It's the practice of managing communication between an organization and its audience. Really what it starts, I suppose, with is your story. It's all about your story. It's about your brand, where you, where you started, where the business started, how you started, who started the, the, the business maybe. Um, and it's, it's about communicating that message out to your audience. And how do you get to your audience, to the reader? You actually channel it through um, the newspapers, magazines, online, digital, more and more digital. Um, I'll run through that now shortly. Radio and broadcast as well, so television. Um, we obviously work on, on all of those platforms with our clients, but it's something that you can do yourselves as well. It's about getting the key message out to people. It's an arm of the marketing plan. So you have your marketing plan in place, whether you're launching your spring, summer or your autumn, winter collection. You're looking at um, how you're going to um, deliver that to market, whether you're selling through to retailers, for example, like whether it be Arnott's or, or um, uh, Brown Thomas or um, if you're selling it online or any through say Harvey Norman or whatever it is whatever your supply chain is that you have in place you also need to support it with public relations it's absolutely uh, vital and um, PR is about targeting media and influential in influencers so we also work very very closely with with influencers um, as well um, but what's really really important is that what you can do if you are going to do your own public relations and um, what can you do yourselves and that's really really important and I'll run through that with you in a second and um, so public relations is the conduit between brands and the media we are like the product equivalent of a distribution company. That's what we are. Um, and I suppose really our job, but also if you want to do it yourself, your job is to get your brand out there into the media space. And it's understanding how to do this. Um, I suppose the most important point is to make sure that you have the contact details of the journalists maybe just picking up the phone and ringing the um, local press in your area, where, whether it be a, a regional newspaper, um, whether it's a radio station, making contact with those people is, is really important and then communicating your brand. So I'll go through that with you in a second. We run a press office here, we write press releases, we have a database um, here of, in the region of between five and 8,000 um, journalist details, um, magazines, newspapers, online, so it could be evoke, her.ie, joe.ie, rte.ie. All of these details we need to keep on our database. Now it is a big job to try and keep all of these details up to date because journalists move from publication to publication, so that's really important. We also work closely with the UK press and also the US. So again, you can do this. It is a big job, but you can do it, but you can cherry pick what particular sector you want to actually focus in on, and it is possible for you to do. So we'll run through how to write a press release in, in, in a little while. Um, and then working with, with your own database, that's something it is, it is doable. Um, creative solutions, we come up with all, with all of those um, in relation to hooking in ideas to various different journalists to create ideas, whether it be a competition um, in woman's way, or if it's um, maybe running some sort of interior um, uh, communication on uh, House and Home magazine, and they have an online version. So I'll run through that in a second. We run events, crisis management, where we are at the moment. I'll run through that with you in a minute. And then also gifting and press drops. That's very much stopped at the moment. A lot of our clients have put that on hold as well as events because it's just not obviously happening with with them um, social distancing and the whole obviously the whole world is is, is changing and, and and they'll probably be pushed down to the end of this year but the journalists still do want to receive content it's really important they want us to still keep those public relations press releases communication and coming because they have to fill their feature pages and the magazines the newspapers they want the stories and it's not all around COVID-19 and um, there's a lot of I suppose uh, brands that will you know jump onto that sort of opportunity where there are opportunities um, 
and I'll run through those with you now, now shortly. So just to touch on database and contacts, this obviously is, is a bedrock for all agencies. As I mentioned earlier, there are so many publications that we have to communicate with, magazines, national, regional, newspapers, digital and online. This is really important that we keep that up to date, as I mentioned earlier, but you can also do that too, and I can show you how to do that if you, if you want to do that yourselves. Um, we do have a long-standing relationship with the media space, but also I know a lot of brands out there also have relationships with various different journalists in their area, um, and keep that going because that's really important, and it's important that you're able to, I suppose, just keep feeding them that information because they want that information from you. You're running your business and you're trying hard to keep that going, which is very difficult at the moment. Um, but I think it's important as well just to have someone in your office communicating that message through because it's just going to be so advantageous to you, especially when we come out of all of this. Um, again, as I mentioned earlier, just keeping that relationship going. Same with stylists. Um, interior designers, chefs, nutritionists, radio and TV presenters. So again, depending on what particular sector you're in, um, befriend them, make contact with them. Um, they want that information, so don't be afraid to knock on their door. Um, they, they, they really would welcome that. A lot of people don't realize it, but they really do. They want information from you. And I think what's important to know is that you've got a really good story to tell a lot of you um, with your, with your, um, your businesses. So, Leveraging the editorial column inch off the back of advertising spend. What I mean by that is if you are spending money on advertising, and I think that wheel has probably stopped turning in, in a sense that there's not outdoor really happening at the moment because people aren't out and about, it's all online. People are diverting their editorial from um, an ad spend from um, magazines and newspapers, which you'll get editorial on the back of, where the journalists will give you free coverage on the back of your ad spend, but that's moving now more towards um, online and digital. So um, it's, it's looking at what you can do and how you can, with, even with a small budget, um, gain a huge amount off that small budget. So it is possible, and don't, don't be afraid of negotiating with a lot of these people that you can actually get bang for your buck. Um, your brand, when you actually communicate out your brand to the various different publications, they're the type of publications that we work with um, a lot. And there's nothing to say that you can't pick up the phone and, and or email the likes of editors in, you know, social or personal or um, evoke, which is an online magazine. Um, you know, you've got different sort of sectors under their umbrella. You've got food, you've got drink, you've got fashion, um, you've beauty. They want to hear all about your brand. They as long as they can see that there's a fit for it, which, which most of you would have, um, they will actually give you editorial column inch. Once they're targeting their audience and you get that brand visibility, it's, it's a win-win for both sides. Um, so just moving on, press releases. This is really, really important for everyone um, to note is that you can write your own press release um, it's just knowing how to do it and it does take some time. What's really important with a press release is that you are able to communicate that compelling story. You have the start, the middle and the end of a press release and I've just included um, a press release here from McGee uh, Clothing. Um, we would write probably anything between you know two to six press releases a day, it just really depends on, on what's happening with the clients, whether they have a new launch, whether there's, you know, their spring summer collection is ready to, to hit the stores. It's all about timing. So once the, your collections hit the stores, uh, then your release can go out because then the journalists will feature. We hope they feature the products or the collection and it's ready then for the readers whether you're reading it in Woman's Way, whether you're reading it in the Sunday Business Post at the weekend, or if you're on your phone, and a lot of people mostly are on mobile, um, you're reading it whether it's on rte.ie or um, you're on Evoke. So, so you need to make sure that you have your logistics in place. So I'll just run through that with you in a second. So on your press release, you need to make sure that you have all of your product description 
ready. So whether it's about a clothing range or whether it's a skincare range, maybe like Green Angel, um, you have the details of what's in the product, you have the details of the cut of the jacket, um, the type of um, uh, weave of the actual um, material, um, the color, you know, it's in keeping with the trends, the fashion trends, whether it's an accessory, whatever it is, you need to make sure that you have the details of that product. You need to make sure that you have your retail pricing, both in Euro and Sterling, which is helpful because your press release could go out to the Northern Ireland publications as well, or further afield to the UK, and then the US as well. So we work closely with, with the Public Relations Boutique International, and we communicate a lot of our clients' brands into the US market. But keeping within Ireland for the moment, what's important is that you get the actual um, uh, template of the press release ready, and, and, and all of your details are there. So Euro and Sterling, where the product is available. If it's available in certain stores, uh, for example, if it's in you know, independent retailers nationwide, if it's in selected pharmacies nationwide, obviously those stores, a lot of those stores are now closed. So you want to direct your reader to online. So what you need to make sure is that you have your website window ready. Your, your website window is, is, is crucial at this time. Um, your e-commerce is crucial at this time. It's making sure that you are actually gaining the traffic to your website, but you also make sure that you're able to purchase on your website. So e-commerce is, is, is vital. Um, this also, I suppose, moves on to the likes of your social media platforms, so your Facebook and your Instagram, making sure you have all of those up on your website as well. That will also help your SEO. On your press release, if you can include a quote where necessary, this particular press release I'm showing here is more of a product press release and a collection press release. I'll show you some other ones further on down where I have Mary from Green Angel who won an award. She's won many awards. This particular award we communicated out to the press. Um, very compelling, um, excellent business, absolutely fantastic business that they run. And we actually had her, um, she included a quote in the press release. So that's really, really beneficial to the journalists. And then what it does is it opens up an opportunity for the journalists to arrange an interview with Mary or whoever it is. So, so there's really a lot of, um, I suppose, um, you know, leverage off the back of a, of a press release that you can, you, can, you can gain. Once the release goes out to the journalist, so once you press send and you actually have your release in, an, in the main body of an email, you have your images, which is really important that your images are high resolution, you get beautiful shoot images done. They can't be taken with your own camera with a phone and um, they need to be done properly and um, there's so many excellent photographers out there they know what they're doing it's worth the investment so i would encourage you if you haven't already to work with um a photographer to to um invest in in really good photography because it does actually add so much value and you'll see the return on investment later on so it's well worth doing that attach your images most of the time they would go into a link, a uh, WeTransfer link in the main body of the email, and then they would go out to the journalist because they're usually too high res to attach and they won't go through their, through their um, server. So once the release goes out to the journalist, it's gone. Most of the time, you know, that's it, they've received it. They will take the copy verbatim a lot of the time, but then sometimes they want to actually just take, maybe in this case, they might want to just feature the jacket. Um, or they may want to just feature a particular product out of the release that you've given them, depending on what they are actually planning on their pages. It could be for um, Mother's Day or it could be for Christmas, depending on what is happening at the time on their features lists. It's really important to give them as much information so that they can decide then what they want to include on that page. So all logistics need to be in place, as I said earlier, your website is key because that is where people will go to. What they would also do is, just to mention, is any brand that um, is communicating out with PR, that they actually make sure that their digital is in place and that will be touched on later on, but your digital is key. It's the first port of call, usually for the 15 to 30, 35 year olds, they will go straight to your um, Instagram page or your Facebook page 
And if they feel that, you know, they're, they're, they could be a coffee shop or it could be a clothing brand. And if they feel that you or they see on, on Instagram or on uh, Facebook that you're not active at all, then they kind of go, well, is this legit? Is this a legit brand? I'm just not so sure. So it's really important um, that you have all of that in place um, on your digital side before you even start communicating out on, on, on um, the PR side. So I'll touch on that a little bit further. Some other examples of press releases here, New in Kashmir, um, Field Day and Green Angel, as I mentioned earlier. So we work with different sectors supporting each brand on, on um, talking about their collections, submitting their press releases into the journalists. It could be about, um, as I said earlier, about an award. Here's one here where, where Mary's talking about um, she won the um, Business Woman of the Year Award. Um, and again, we just pulled the press release together and got that out with, along with images of her products, which are absolutely vital to include. Same with um, Field Day with Alex. So, so the images are very beautiful. So it really does help. Um, it gives you that added kudos really um, to your brand and the journalist. It's all there for them and you actually make it easier for them and they can include it an awful lot quicker and you are guaranteed to get that editorial coverage. Um, New in Kashmir is an online brand. Again, she's very savvy. She's got everything ready. You can purchase online. So she has all of her e-commerce in place ready to go. We also hold samples of products, but that's important. And I'll talk about that later about gifting the journalists. Um, the type of coverage that is achieved following a release that goes out, as you can see here, Irish Tatler, Woman's Way, The Independent, that's called editorial column inch. And you'll see that in some of those there, they're highlighted with yellow. Um, that's the keyword. So we would send the release out to the journalists and they include, for example, in the middle image there, you've got bio oil. Our client, wants to see their editorial piece. They want to see their product within the magazines or online. That's what it's all about. That's the key objective is to get the product into the press. But having the images, as I mentioned, is absolutely vital. This here then is picked up and it's highlighted in yellow and it's picked up by a media monitoring company. We work with a media monitoring company. You can work with a media monitoring company as well. There's a number of them around. We work with one called Truehawk. You pay them a fee and they monitor wherever your brand lands. Now, obviously we work with them because we're working with a number of brands, but you yourself can get your release out and then you can switch on the service with the media monitoring company where they will pick up whatever your keyword is. So whether whatever your brand name is, or it could be someone in your company you're talking about, they are keywords that you give to this company and you pay them a fee and it's, 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 it's not expensive at all um, and it's definitely well worth it because then you know which journalists have featured your product and what's really beneficial there as well is that you can pick up the phone and you can ring them or email them um, and, and thank them for the piece that they did and what that, do, what that does is it actually reinforces the relationship with them we do it a lot, um, but if you're doing it yourself, it reinforces the relationship so that the next time when you're going to send maybe your autumn winter images out or whatever it is that you're sending out, you can go to that person. So you're starting to build up your own database. More coverage achieved, um, made in Ireland, which was a feature that the Irish Examiner ran, um, where we had Green Angel featured. Um, there's so many opportunities here. Uh, RT Guide, where we had Field Apothecary, a candle brand featured, amongst other brands which I'm sure are recognisable to many of you, like Kinvara Skincare, uh, Be A Beauty, uh, Pestle & Mortar, all Irish brands. They want to know about you. They want to feature your brand. So there's a huge amount of opportunity here. Um, Social and Personal Weddings, Thomas Sabo Jewelry, that's an international brand, um, but we are their hub here in Ireland. So we manage their events, we manage their um, uh, influencer engagement and also their all of their press relations for, for the last uh, 10 years. So wherever we see a fit, we communicate that out. Um, so we don't always know where the brands are going to land. It's a lot of the time, it's, it's 
the relationship that you have with the journalist, but sometimes it's the luck of the draw. It really just depends on what's happening at that time. Right now, we're in a situation where we're in a little bit of a mess, I suppose, um, in, in the world. Um, but it does come with opportunities. There's a lot of opportunities here for, for everybody. Um, and I think that, you know, if you just keep doing what you're doing, but add on a little bit more flavor to, to what you're doing in your business, maybe get someone in or maybe get one of your family members to, to look at your, your digital, especially if you have them um, um, under 20s at home and you can get them to look at maybe some of your social media platforms if you can't afford to outsource it it is so doable and easy to do once you put your mind to it so again as i said there's opportunities here it's getting that message out and and you just never know what what comes of it and um, business to business and profile coverage this a few examples here of um rosie temple with uh, mcgee clothing and we had a, a opportunity there for for her she came into the business a number of years ago um she she brings a, a wealth of knowledge to to mcgee to the family and the family business and what we did was we we pitched it into irish country magazine and, and they wrote a really beautiful piece it's hard to show it all here um, and the same then um with 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 the rest of the family we had a number of interviews that we ran with um sunday jillian nellis in the sunday business post it was it, it, a lot of copy here, but it's a really interesting story. And again, as I said earlier, it's all about the story. Really important. You don't think you may have the story, but really everyone has a story to tell. So it's important to get that out. More coverage here um, on the left hand side, new in Kashmir. Quiva is she's Irish. Quiva Ryan set up um, new in Kashmir. She lives in Australia. We um, pitched it out to a number of the publications, and we got a, um, a fantastic piece with the Gloss magazine. They're so supportive. A really beautiful piece, all about Quiva, but it more in the day in the life of um, Quiva and what she does, and her family, and her kids, and where she lives, and what inspires her. Not just about the product. They do mention the uh, Kashmir uh, brand and, and what I suppose um, influenced her to set up a business in the first place. But what the readers want is a little bit more than that. So as I said, it's all about the compelling story. On the right hand side, um, our client Lucinda with Weir and Sons Jewelers. Again, pitching in the story there about Lucinda, a marketing manager of Weir's. Um, she's got a great story to tell. And again, so does the business, celebrating 150 years last year. Um, family business, um, excellent offering, very high end, beautiful, beautiful story. Um, and this piece here was, was really lovely. What we did was we had Irish Country Magazine wanted to shop Lucinda's style. She's got great style. So we selected a number of pieces here and we worked with the magazine and Lucinda got obviously the coverage. So it was a little bit more of a, um, a styling piece um, and then a little bit of a day in the life of and what inspires her and what she's interested in. So again, more editorial coverage, a slightly different way. I mentioned earlier media monitoring. Um, again, it's, it's, it is important to use a media monitoring company. It's very inexpensive. You do get to see the type of coverage which is so beneficial to your brand. Um, what you can do with that coverage as well is when the media monitoring company pick it up, you can actually share that across your social media platforms. So you can share it across Instagram or Facebook, even LinkedIn, which is really important to use LinkedIn. It's very much your, um, uh, your business window. Um, it's like sending out a press release and it's got that more of a business audience, whereas Instagram is a slightly younger demographic. So it's really important to just use what you've got because you've got so much to, to use there. Um, as I said, the media monitoring is key because you will get the clips in. You get different, you get two alerts in, in a day and those... Um, keywords you have to give them the keywords and then the alerts come in so again it's it, it is well worth doing and inexpensive press drops creative ideas these are all very useful um if for example you're launching we've done many many press drops over the years it's important because the journalists yes they, they receive a lot of information they get press releases in their inbox all day long 
um, if you've got something really special, like here we had bio oil, where Love Your Marks campaign. Um, bio oil, um, obviously it's an international brand. We were localizing it here in Ireland. They ran um, Love Your Marks campaign in the US. So what we did was we pulled together our own ideas with the client to generate a really interesting, meaningful, um, I suppose, just to get that uh, personal touch with the journalist and we pull that together here and get that out to, to the press but you can do that yourselves you can do that very easily again you've built up a database of, of the journalists the names of the various people that you work with and even as a thank you send them something from your business it is so so easy easy to do um, gifting awards competitions giveaways other editorial route and very cost effective we do so many of these and again just a snippet of what we what we do here um, so for example we have green angel uh, as i mentioned earlier um, i think a lot of you would would be very familiar with that brand um, and as i mentioned earlier we've we've other other brands like thomas Sabo, we work with remington so all of you who have a product you can actually run competitions and and also enter awards they're free of charge. It's just a matter of you pulling the details together, pulling the products together in your offices and getting those out to the various publications. Um, it, it's, it's just time consuming. That's really all. It's, it's very easy to do. It's just time consuming. Again, if you do win an award or if you're featured in a specific award like uh, Social and Personal Beauty Awards, you can take that PDF. You can ask the publication for the PDF. And then what you can do is you can pop it up onto your uh, social media channels, but also to make sure that your social media channels are platformed on your website. That will help with your SEO. So again, maybe using this time during COVID-19 where we're all finding, I wouldn't say it's, it's we're, we're bored, but we're just trying to find other ways of generating ideas um, to, to, I suppose, to make sure that we're still selling our products um, through to to uh, to our audience, but also even further, throwing that net out a little bit further, it's important. So we need to adapt and we need to make sure that we're digital savvy and that we are getting that information up on our social media platforms. Otherwise, people will walk away from your brand. Um, so <laughs> making sure your brand window is there. So working with stylists, industry experts, and it actually should say brand partnerships, not band partnerships at the moment, but anyway, so um, yeah, so it's making sure that we keep that brand message channeled right out there through to, as I said earlier, magazines, um, um, industry experts. So these people are the industry experts. Stylists as well. We work with a lot of stylists. So if you have a fashion brand, for example, um, you can actually pitch that brand in to the stylists. Um, whether it's going to land on Ireland AM, you may have to pay for that. It's very inexpensive and um, very different than the UK market. The UK market is, is it's a lot more challenging to, to get your brand onto um, TV, but here it's a, it's a lot more achievable. But again, you would have to pay for a stylist to um, include your brand on Ireland AM. Uh, obviously, expose now has gone, but you, you, there are many opportunities still out there. Um, so again, as I mentioned, PR is the persuasion business. So you're trying to get your audience to con convince your audience to get them to come to your shop or to your to your website, which is which is your window now at the moment. Um, and I think that's really important that you dress up your digital window, but your website window at the same time. Really, really important. So get working on that. Um, promoting your product or your idea. Um, I'm going to go through a little bit of um, information about a particular product now in a second, which is really interesting. They had to change up a little bit of their offering so in this crisis. So it's important to just to look at where you are on things at the moment and, and see if there's anything you can, you can tweak um, to, to attract that audience. Um, PR seeks to persuade consumers via unpaid or earned methods. So we don't pay the journalist to feature a product. You don't have to pay the journalist to feature any of your products. It's free. It's just your time and you utilizing the opportunity to contact and speak to these to these journalists is, is key. Um, whether it's traditional media, so um, social media or speaking engagements, PR is about communicating with the audience. So again, as I said, it's 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 just getting picking up the phone 
speaking to the journalist, making sure you have your images ready, you have your pricing ready, you have your features and your benefits, you have all your research done and it's ready to go because you only get one chance with that particular story. Um, brand ambassadors, trusted industry experts, we work with all of these. Um, again, it's something that you can do, it just takes a little bit more time. So as an example of brand partners, we work with a number of these people here. For example, Daniel Davey, we go out and we um, target these people. So, so, so Fiona, Naomi, Daniel and Denise, they all work in different sectors. Um, but what we do is we look and spot certain um, uh, brand partners, whether it be through an agency, through a talent agency, or if we see spot an influencer, we feel that they would be a really good fit for a particular brand. So Fiona Ayuma is a, is a Japanese chef. And what we've done is we have partnered her with our client um, KitchenAid and to Dietrich. Um, so it's just coming up with ideas as to what you can do yourselves with your brands, you might want to, if you have a clothing brand, you might want to partner with a certain um, uh, influencer that you feel is, you follow and you feel that she's, or he's inspiring, very creative, tells a great story. Look, pick up the phone and, and, and it's so doable. And you find a lot of the time that they're really interested to hear, yeah, I'd like some sort of partnership operation going on. And, and it's, it, that's how it works. Stylists, we work with a, a lot of stylists. And again, you can, and I think it's, it's very advisable to, to work with them. Um, they want the content. Like the journalists want the content, they want the content. Now, the difference there is that if you're working with a particular stylist, you will need to pay, but not a huge amount um, uh, of a fee for them to, to include your product or your, your clothing brand in a particular uh, TV piece. So we would do a lot of work with the, the Irish stylists, Justine King and Lorna Duffy to, 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 um, to mention here. And also then in the UK, we're doing quite a bit as well for some of our clients. And, and we found a lot more interest in the US as well. So, so that's, that's something else to just bear in mind. Um, stylists will approach us from time to time and, and, and say, look, I've got something coming up in a particular magazine or on Ireland AM, would your client be interested? So they know who to go to. Um, a lot of the time they find it can be very time consuming to ring around all the brands. So if they can go to one person to, um, I suppose just who has a, a maybe a collection of brands that they look after so it's just easier for them to contact the agencies and um, as i said they do go direct but it just takes that little bit longer um styling slots i've just got examples here of some of the styling slots that we've done over the last 16 years and um, i haven't included them all here but um, there's a few um regatta outdoor clothing with ireland am uh, Alexander Fitzgerald, he's great. So we pay him a fee and then sometimes we have to pay for the models as well. It just really depends. Um, there's ways around obviously having a, a standalone slot. We can join in with someone else like a jewellery brand. So it's a 50-50 cost share there with the jewellery brand and then the clothing brand. So that makes it much more cost effective for you. Um, obviously Exposé is gone, but Ireland AM is very much go-to now. Um, also online, her.ie, evoke.ie, um, uh, also you know, amazing, um, and also very much on, on social media platforms as well, working with influencers. Shoots, um, again, you can, you can avail of these. These are just to show you the type of shoots that we've, we've done. Um, so for example, social and personal weddings where the jewelry brand, we, um, we supply the actual journalist or the stylist with the pieces of jewelry and then they feature them as long as they mention the, the name of the brand. So Thomas Sabo or it could be Weir and Sons. In this case, I think it was Weir and Sons. Um, and then also on the right hand side, um, Sunday Business Post magazine, I think that was um, McGee Clothing, and they will get a mention. So it's important for us to manage that we get the mention because at the end of the day, the brand themselves will want to see that mention. Events, let's just show you a couple of events that we've run in the last while. Again, events, a lot of our clients in the last, what, three or four weeks ago, 
their all of their events have been pushed down to the to the latter part of this year. So we'll just all have to wait and see what happens happens with that. Um, we're in Sons and Thomas Sabo press events. So um, the one above, this one here, would be very much press, but also you'd have customers come along as well. So in this case, we're in Sons would bring their key customers along. So you can run your own events if you have stores. Um, or even if you don't have a store and you're selling um, through other uh, retail outlets like department stores, you can run events in the department stores. If you have a shopping shop, a concession, you can run them there. Um, work closely with the store themselves. They love that. They want to see more footfall into the stores, even if it is after um, the store closes you can we've run many many of these but you can run them too um, you bring in your key customers you you maybe work with some department stores who have a database of customers but also you can bring in the journalists and it's a really good way to get to know the journalists so that is something that you should look at at doing maybe you know in the autumn not, not at the moment, we won't be doing that. Um, sample invites, again, it's nice to do up a really smart invite, get, get your creative people to pull that together or your web developer, he can do it or she can do it. Um, just pull it together um, just top line what the event is about and who to communicate with, who the RSVP should go to. Um, very straightforward, very doable and inexpensive. Um, sample social press releases, I'll, I'll just flick through this fairly quickly, but just to give you sort of a quick idea, um, you know, we would send those out and then obviously after the event, you'll have an opportunity to um, have social images featured in the various magazines um, and also online. This one over here on the right hand side, um, this was uh, KitchenAid um, and Alika Hobbs. Um, trade event actually up in Cal, which is Kitchen Appliances Limited. So again, it's not just the um, consumer press, we work with, with trade publications as well. I think all of this, as I'm talking about the, all of the events and all the PR side of things, don't forget to keep talking to the Design and Crafts Council of Ireland because they know exactly what, you know, what this is all about. And they're there to support you and, and, and run, as I said earlier, excellent, um, mentoring services and uh, workshops. So uh, pick up the phone and, and do speak to Ima and her team. Social coverage, as I mentioned earlier, that's a great opportunity for you to get editorial coverage. You'll get the brand mentioned, the name of your of your brand, what the event was about, and you could sometimes get full page. So it's 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 a really valuable piece um, and it's at no no charge. You're just paying for the photographer to to come along and you do need to have the photographer because he'll um, submit those into the journalists um, or you can do it yourself. So just where we are at the moment, obviously um, in the middle of this pandemic, which is throwing us all everything up in the air. And I think we're all, um, we've all felt this in such a short period of time. Um, I think if, if history is repeating itself, which I think it is, um, we're gonna come out of this and we're gonna come out so much stronger and we've done it before. So we will get through it, but it's just muddling through and, 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 and finding ways of generating awareness and generating sales. So here's an example of um, lovely lady Anne who runs a company called Easy Dry. Um, sustainable, um, uh, one use towels. Um, she has an excellent business. The only thing is that right now she, she can, we, we spoke about three weeks ago um, and she doesn't really sell into consumer. So again, it was looking at this opportunity right now in this crisis where maybe some of you I'm talking to today are asking the question, how do I sell my product into the consumer space? So Anne and I had a chat and I sort of felt there's an opportunity here um, to, tar to, to reroute, not even to reroute, to, to look at opportunities in the consumer space without eliminating um, um, ruining that relationship that she already has with the trade and um, she sells into hair salons they're closed and um, into nursing homes this is this is all challenging at the moment and um, we're not trying to completely obviously to 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 reroute that business as such we want to keep that going but also at the same time we have to look at 
um, what consumers are looking for. So we felt there's an opportunity there to communicate about easy dry towels into the consumer space. We're all at home and um, the washing machine is going, well in our house it's probably going about three times a day. There's towels constantly being washed. Um, uh, the dog needs to be washed as well so, so there's another another need to, to have a disposable towel. But look, it, it's, it's about, we're all at home, we're back to basics. And we felt, look, there's an opportunity here. So we pulled together with Anne and Angela, their press release last week, and um, looked at trying to adapt it to consumers. So she was um, up to now um, servicing the trade market, which she will continue to do, but it's looking at the consumer. How are we gonna do that? Her box is in her warehouse were ready to go with thousands and thousands of units of towels in the boxes. The guys in the warehouse, we had to get them to go into the warehouse, get up onto their racks, get them down off the pallet, repackage those boxes into family packs, for example, and work out how many towels, bath towels do you need? How many hand towels do you need in a, in a family pack, maybe for a month? So, if I'm going to be buying a family pack of towels for my family, how much would I spend? Will I use them? Yes, I will. So I, can, I think it's all about adapting. It's adapting to a time right now that we're, we're in, the times we're in, which is a crisis. Um, I think everyone has to adapt. We need, to, it's time to reinvent ourselves um, without obviously, you know, I suppose, um, you don't want to destroy your, you know, your current client base, but you know, want to keep that going, but you need to look at other opportunities. And again, as I said, this will, this will give us opportunities. We'll all have opportunities now. So it's time to look at the shift of um, the way people are, are, are buying right now. They're buying online and it's, it's completely shifting. So I think what, what we need to look at is, um, we need to look at what you have. You look at what you have. Um, talk to Emer and her team in the Crafts Council because they may have some ideas as well as to how they can help you. Um, people are shopping local. So just one thing to mention, um, and I was talking to my team this morning, and it's really, I think it's really important and it, it, at, at this juncture to mention this. There is a new online window. If you don't have e-commerce on your website, you can use App, certain apps. There's one that has just been launched by a girl. I think she was in in uh, Michael Smurf at Business. She came up with this um, uh, idea, this app called Bizu, um, where people want to shop local. They want to they want to shop. They want to look at sustainable products. Um, they want to shop um, in their local uh, boutique, but it's closed. So those local boutiques um, in that area should try and get onto Bizu or another alternative app where they, they can sell their products through that shop window. So if you don't have e-commerce or if you can't have e-commerce set up on your website for whatever reason, do try to use Bizu. So retailers are adapting now and I think that, that everyone wants to support local. So it's another opportunity for you to sell your products. Um, just conscious of, of time here. Um, on digital, um, as I said earlier, we're, 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 people are it's shifting um, even more. Um, digital is key. We, we work with a lot of brands that um, obviously already sell, sell online, but again, a lot of brands don't, but they need to adapt now at this, at this stage and become a little bit more digital savvy. Um, come up with ideas and, and again just to mention that e-commerce is king so it's making sure that you have your website ready that you're able to go on uh, people are able to go onto your website and shop you can see on the usually up on your website on most websites you know add to cart so that's important that you have that set up get your web guide to do that and um, there's just some st stats there just in relation to 83 percent of retail sales in australia took place online rather than in store so things are shifting daily um, purchases from mobile devices surpass web purchases. So again, people are using their mobile devices more and more. Um, I think probably certain demographics are than others. You need, as I mentioned earlier, to make sure that your website and logistics are all in order. That's key. A good online shopping experience. So again, people will remember. And, and I think if you don't have a good online shopping experience at that stage, they won't go back. So usually they say a customer is not a customer until they return 
Um, so that's really important that you, um, first of all, entice them to go and shop with you and keep them, keep them as a customer. Um, online media is, again, as I mentioned earlier, this is where you know, we kick in, but you can do this as well. You can communicate with the likes of Evoke, Her.ie, Joe.ie, Irish Times. They will all take your press release and they'll feature it if they feel it's relevant. So don't be afraid to send your press release in to these people. Um, as I said earlier at the very beginning, it's all about your story. It's all about your strong brand and you have the, some fantastic brands out there, but you just need to tell that story and, and, and get your release into them. Um, so just one thing, and I'll move on to a particular um, competition, online competitions that are really popular. We've, we've run a number of those. I'll, I'll refer to those now in the next few slides. Um, online is what it's all about. And I know some people are a little bit afraid, but once you dip your toe into this, you know, you, you'll, it's exciting and it's great to be able to see your sales increase um, with, with online. So, so, and it's, it's measurable. I think that's really, really important that it's measurable. Social media, influencer marketing, that really works. We do, we, we work with a number of brands who we manage their social media content uh, calendars. We manage their Facebook, um, their Instagram, their Twitter accounts. Um, we will write content. We will write their posts for them. Some of you work, work on that really, really well. Um, you do that already and, and some of you don't, but you should be doing that. And, and again, don't be afraid to do it. It is easy to do. Um, Ring, Ring Emer and, and her team um, uh, in the Design and Crafts Council, so supportive. They'll tell you how to do this. Again, if you need any help, ring us and we'll, we'll help you. No problem at all. So again, that's really important that you, um, you keep on top of that. Just moving on, um, again, as I said, digital marketing is, is, is a big, big area right now and it's really important. It's that first port of call for people. Um, you can run campaigns um, and as, the, as I mentioned here, they're executed exclusively through digital channels. So, you know, it's, it's, it's important that you have your digital channels. So your, your Facebook, your Instagram, your Twitter accounts, you have those um, up and ready on your website. You use them, you keep them updated, whatever it is you talk about, just keep it updated. Um, and, um, and, and that's how you gain traffic. Um, it gives marketeers more control tools and data to analyze the effectiveness of a campaign. So if you've got a campaign running, an example here, we had an, a campaign with uh, BioOil on Instagram, Love Your Marks campaign. We were able to manage all of this. We were able to analyze the effect of the campaign by how many people actually went on um, online. Um, it, it's just so measurable. It's so much, so much easy to, to measure than, than you think. Um, so it's, it's important that you keep that updated. I think also podcasts are huge. If you are already in that zone, fantastic. Um, we can help you um, if you want any advice on that. And I'm sure um, the same with Ema and her team, they can help you with, with uh, podcasts and how that works and blogs. Make sure you keep your blog updated. There's nothing worse than having a blog on your website and it's not updated. So keep that updated um, all the time and keep it up on your on your website because again that'll help with your your seo um, i'll just move on to digital marketing strategy so just something just to to mention um which i thought was very um very relevant right now would resonate with a lot of you so none of us can get to hairdressers um and um some people are doing a diy job so um we work with a client called Remington Ireland and I just felt it was a good one to put up because whilst we look after their social media um, platforms and you know we manage their Facebook page um, it, it's it's right now in this middle of this this pandemic we're not able to get out so people are actually you know their sisters and brothers and mums and dads and whatever they're all can you cut my hair? Can you, you know, so, so people are going online and they're actually buying, you know, um, uh, Remington clippers or if it's, if it's a shavers or whatever, you know, they're actually purchasing more of that type of thing. Sales of, 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 of home, um, 
how to hair kits and all of that and coloring your hair at home is all increased so that's just something i thought we'd put up because it's it's just important and some of you might have a brand that um that you feel oh, i'm not sure if, if it's if it's something that we need to push out you do you need to push it out and get it out there so i won't go through too much of this there but um you can also take the notes afterwards and any questions and, and give us a give us a call um, digital activities again as i mentioned evoke.ie um earlier we work with them a lot and then um my Ho house and home which is a magazine but i'll just touch on evoke um, we ran some online editorial for the brands at kitchen appliances limited like to dietrich frankie sinks um uh kitchenaid so this is something that we put to evoke um we we talked about the new collection for kitchenaid and submitted recipes and this gives us a little bit more um, more of a story and, and, and they featured um, all about KitchenAid and the recipes. We supply them with images um, and again as I said to you it's important to have those images. So get that information out to these people because they want it and um, that's online. So we ran a competition at the same time with that and also with the likes of House and Home magazine which is online and we ran a an Instagram competition with House and Home, where they hashtagged my house and home. So again, we can go, go through this with you or email her team at the Design Graphs Council can explain, but these type of opportunities are all there. And there's a small fee for this one. Um, some of these, there's no fee. So it really, really just dep depends on, on, on um, which publication you, you, um, you target. This particular one with KitchenAid and My House and Home ran for 30 days, um, where people were basically asked to upload a photo from home of them, say, a cooking, I think it was. Um, in different sectors, you can, you can um, each, each month it ran in different sectors. For this particular one, it was all about the kitchen. And each person was asked to, you can just submit your picks, whichever is the best pick, I think one. So it's a really good platform to talk about your brand um, and you'll get your brand mention. And again, they're targeting thousands and thousands and thousands of viewers. So, and then also their Instagram followers. So um, it's important to, to do all of this. Um, and I think that, you know, you've got so much there and it's just utilizing what you've got. Um, and again, really just to summarize, it's targeting your, your, your audience, it's targeting the right demographic, just finding that fit. But what's really important is just getting your brand message out there. Thank you. Hello everyone, I'm just uh, asking Jenny now to collate the questions that she's going to answer for you. So if you could just uh, bear with us and thank you all for being with us today. Jenny will be back with you to answer those questions in just one second. Timer. Okay, so am I seen on the screen now? <laughs> Probably am. Yeah. Okay, sure. Yeah, lovely.
Okay, so sorry, could you just repeat that question again, please? Yeah, okay. Well, okay, so so I'm thinking that, I mean, this lady, um, what she should do is, I don't know if she's ever written a press release, but to take what she's got already in her collection. So, for example, any items that she has made already, would she have images of those pieces of jewellery? Um, does she have any social media around any of those pieces of jewellery which she has made to order that she can maybe either communicate in a press release or share so on, on her social media platforms? Has she got anything already that she can actually use? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Delighted to, delighted to. Okay, perfect. Okay. Okay. Yep, perfect. Mm -hmm. Sure. Yep, sure, sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very good. Yeah, very good questions. Okay, number one, um, just to answer the link. So you can use WeTransfer. WeTransfer is free. Um, you can upload oh, anything up to, you know, 100 MB. I mean, it's massive, even more on WeTransfer. Um, the other one is Dropbox. Those two are perfect, and but the only thing about WeTransfer is expires, I think, after about seven days. So if you are sending your own images out to the journalists, um, unless they've opened it within the seven days and saved it in their own folder as to when they're going to use it. That's, so that's, so that's, number, that's answering one question. And the second question, which I think is a really good one, the database. There are databases that you can... Um, yes, dip into, and but you pay for them. That's the only thing. Um, there is a company uh, called Media HQ, which um, you can avail of a database, which will give you the majority of the, the journalists' um, contact details. Um, again, they have to work with GDPR, so uh, they can't, obviously, they, they, they'll give out what they can give out, but you, you do pay for that service. I don't know how much it is. Um, but you, you, you can avail of their service, yes. I'm going to go through these really slowly and carefully because there yeah. are a lot of them. Okay, okay. there's a simple one here. Could you please spell for us uh, Bijou? Oh, Bizu, Bezu. I probably pronounced it incorrectly, but it's uh, B-E-Z-Z-U. Z-Z-U. Okay, yes. thank you very much. Okay, I've got um, another question here. Um, how would you find out what's a price stylist charge? Yeah, very good question. Actually, these are all excellent questions. Um, so you can you can you can phone them. Um, you can go through Ireland AM, but we we can also tell you we as an agency can tell you um, what they what they charge. So there's I'm sure everyone's aware of um, the word rate card. There is a rate card fee that stylists will charge um, and we can either tell you or you can go directly for example if you want to use a stylist called justine king you would ring um you would ring directly to um virgin media which was tv3 and you go straight through to ireland am and they will tell you how to get hold of justine king if that makes sense or you can we can give you the details if you wish Brilliant. Okay, we're going to keep going here. The first yeah. thing I'm going to say to you is I'm getting a load of positive feedback that very useful and very informative. A Great. number of people have asked us for the um, 
the slides afterwards and I'm sure you've absolutely no problem. No problem. That. No and, problem. Uh, we, we will get over this sound issue, but we're, we're more questions coming in. So, okay. okay. Um, this is from someone, this is a really interesting one. Uh, they are finding it really difficult to, to get traction with journalists in Ireland. Are there any additional points for generating press releases to ensure better success? Okay, yeah, for another excellent question. Um, first of all, it's, it's a little bit tricky for me to answer it unless I could see the way they are sending the release out. Sometimes with uh, there's a certain way that you need to send a press release out. So you've got a subject bar in all of our emails, you've got a subject bar, and it's making sure that you type in the first few two words are in bold and caps, press release. And then it might be, a new skincare launch from such and such or jewellery brands from such and such or whatever the title is of your press release. But it's making sure that you are actually telling that journalist that there's a press release coming into his or her inbox. So it's a little bit tricky for me to answer, um, but it's making it very, um, I suppose, legible as well. And that the journalist can see straight away that she's got or he's got a press release coming into the inbox because they get so many emails all of the time. Okay, um, I've got another one here that someone's saying that it's, it's very informative and there's an awful lot of content and can they be sent it afterwards? I'm absolutely certain. Sure, if somebody wants a hard copy, they can have it, but I would suggest that we'll probably send it digitally. But if anybody wants a hard copy, that's absolutely fine. Okay, I have yes. another one coming through. Uh, my products are not uh, ready yet. The advice I'm hearing is to get an online presence and following can you give me a few hints? Okay, yeah. Um, again, depending on how far down the road they are with their, their product. And again, I don't know what sector it's in, um, but what's important is that whatever sector they're in, they do research in that particular sector. Number one is what's really important is to target that demographic. The demographic that they're trying to sell to um, I, I, as I said, I don't know who th these people are or what sector they're in, but who is their audience? So what they need to do is they need to make sure that they're targeting that right audience in order to increase their following on their social media platform. So for example, on Instagram, if they're targeting that particular age group between 15 and say 35 or 40, um, that they are, there's touch points there with those particular people that they're trying to communicate with, if that makes sense. So, so that person in their business needs to make sure that they are, they're fishing in that right pond, if you get me, so that they, 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 they are targeting that, that customer that they ultimately want to sell to. Um, if, if they wanted to, to phone me and talk to me a little bit more about the industry or the sector they're in, I, I may be able to give them a little bit more information. Um, but it's also, for them also, what's important is for them to follow maybe influencers and, and, and opinion leaders in that particular sector. And when they follow them, those people will see that they've followed them. That's another really good way of getting increased, in, increased followers. Okay, what type of competitions would you suggest doing for fashion? Oh God, there's loads of them. Um, Okay, so as I mentioned a few there earlier in the presentation, um, so for example, fashion competitions we've done where it could be, for example, say Irish Country Magazine, um, which is obviously it's sold on the newsstand, so it's an actual magazine, but also they have online presence. So at the moment, they probably, a lot of them will be running competitions, I would imagine, but for example, with Irish Country Magazine, they may contact all the PR agencies. We receive an email in from them. They might say, look, we're running a competition for um, the spring, summer, uh, get the look. And it could be, I don't know, it could be like a beach bag or it could be a fashion or it could be a jacket um, um, or it could be get beach ready or something like that. And, and it's clothing for the summer's day where they might say look we are running a competition but it's a certain value so the ave the advertising value for the magazine has to be say i don't know 500 euros retail value if a brand a fashion brand can um 
I suppose, offer a certain amount of their clothing or collections to that value, then the magazine will run the competition for them. If that make, does that make sense? That, that does indeed. Listen, I'm getting a couple of questions in ranging from um, what does Revolve charge? Okay. I knew I I say, yeah, yeah. yeah, I knew this. <laughs> so what yeah. we do is, is you, um, anyone who's interested in that should, should contact you directly. And this is by no means anybody um, a pitch um, on, on Jenny's behalf at all. Jenny is happy to do some mentoring with the Design and Crafts Council and it's, it's not a pitch for her company. So, I mean, but if you want to look at that, that's a, a kind of a, a separate issue. But here's, sure. a more, here's a more general question on it. What would be a kind of a cost for a three to six months campaign, PR campaign across social media using a PR company? Yeah, another very, really good questions here today. Um, so if, for example, a brand has, again, it depends on how far they are down the road already on their social media. So if they have Instagram and so Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter, which are the three main, I, I suppose, social media platforms that people will use. Um, we, we work with a number of brands that we manage their posts on a daily basis um, and we charge them a monthly fee. So if a brand out there has Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter, and if they use them regularly, but they don't have time really to keep it updated, they're too busy at the moment to try and, obviously we're all trying to keep our businesses afloat and look, our eyes are sort of focused on something else at the moment and, and, and they don't have time. Um, that's obviously going to be much more beneficial for us as an agency than to step in and take over because there's not the starting up of it um, because it does take time to generate followers and, and um, uh, I suppose to create that awareness and um, so there's I suppose really there's two sort of pronged approach here one is that we could pull together sort of a three to six month uh, plan for that particular client to continue on and manage their Instagram Facebook and Twitter or we could start it from scratch if they've never ever ever jumped onto that particular um, digital space before and they want an agency like Revolve to look after them but one thing I will say is that be very be very mindful of this. It's it takes time. It just takes time. If you're to start off from scratch and you've never had an Instagram or Facebook or Twitter, it takes time to generate um, traction on all of those platforms. But we can pull together a three to six month um, campaign for whoever it is and um, no problem and again what we'd have to do is we'd have to look at where they are at this moment in time and pull some sort of uh, fee together um, to to help them and and as you mentioned there Emer, you know again it's it's very much working closely with the excellent work that you do in the Design and Crafts Council, but also we're, we're here to help um, and again I think at this moment in time just to to, to point out that you know, we're, we're, we're working with a number of brands suddenly in the last three weeks that have never worked with a PR agency before and they're, they, they are afraid of dipping their toe into that water. And what we're doing is we're pulling together really um, fair and reasonable fees because the world we're living in at the moment. So really just to answer that viewer's question is that it just depends on how far they are down the road on social media and we can pull a really, really good a reasonable, very reasonable and um, fair fee together for them. So if they want to give me a call on it, I can, I'm happy to, to, to look, but I'd have to do an audit. An audit would have to be carried out first on their social media. Okay, just to help people out here, could you please um, scroll back to your presentation so they have your, you know, company name and, and email address. A couple of people have asked me that, otherwise I can send it on to them afterwards, but it might be nice for them to have it now. Sure. Um, what is the name of uh, the media monitoring uh, company? Would you narrow yeah. it down to a few? Or yes, I would. Is? Yeah, there's a couple. Um, Kantar Media, K-A-N-T-A-R, is one. Uh, there's a number of them. There's um, True Hawk, um, T-R-U-E-H-A-W-K, is one that we use. We find them great. And um, I think if the more you have, I'm sure we're all familiar with bundles. So it's a bit like where you have your your bundle with um, with uh, I think three or any of these companies where where the more keywords you give them, the better the rate is, and they'll charge they'll charge it on a monthly basis. But one thing I would say 
to anyone considering using a media monitoring company now it is very inexpensive you're looking at maybe 150 or 160 a month it isn't a huge amount of investment but what's important is that you only switch it on when you need to you don't need to have it on straight away the day you send out a press release because you've got to give the journalist time to take the press release feature it maybe it could be three or four months, three or four weeks down the road before a journalist actually takes your press release and features your product. So there's no point in paying a media monitoring company to switch it on from day one when, you know, really it would probably only need to be switched on probably about two or three weeks after you send out the press release, maybe two weeks. Okay, I have another one here. Do you recommend using all social platforms, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, or just focus on one or two, depending on your business? Yeah, another excellent question. Again, it really just depends on, on your, um, your brand. So, um, so for example, if you have a brand and your audience is very much targeted to, um, I'm saying younger because unfortunately I am over 35. Um, so um, uh, from you know, age eight, 15 to say 35, do invest in, in, in Instagram. It's it's just it's just such a great platform, and you're gonna get you know you're gonna get a huge amount of ROI return on investment by using Instagram, and um, Facebook as well. And um, Twitter is much more of I think having your Twitter is 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 great, but it's much more um, a lot of I think um, well, a lot of the journalists use Twitter a lot. It's quick. It's it's very much um, comment driven, whereas Instagram is much more image led. Okay. So you again, if if they want to give me a call and let me know, you know, very happy to help them out with that, and and, and I'm very happy to do all of this, no problem. As sort of a bit of advisory for people, give me a shout, and I I can I can guide you, or or my team can guide you. Yeah, no problem. Okay, I have two kind of interlinked ones here. Right. Mm -hmm. In the past, we've created pieces for celebrities and never really utilised the opportunity. Then is it too late now, or can we? Um, include them in press releases or uh, blogs now as this is a new avenue we are intending to explore yeah okay gosh. so basically what this person is saying is they've done it in the past they feel that they didn't uh, capitalize on, sure. on the opportunity and is it possible to do a bit of that retrospectively absolutely i mean i think once that the that celebrity and um, whoever it is has already given you their uh, permission um at the get-go then there's no reason why you can't bring that up again now. So even if it is over a year ago um, that you did something, you made a bespoke piece for that particular uh, celebrity and he or she wore it on the red carpet or whatever, the TV or whatever it was, or they simply took a pic of themselves wearing the earrings or the necklace and they sent it to you, this, and it was a year or two ago, there's no reason why you can't do a throwback. You know, throwbacks are actually very popular. Um, once you have permission and you can tag, what's really important is to tag that particular person in the post. So if it is something that you want to maybe throw back to a year ago and, oh, remember the days, our, our old collection, which which sold extremely well, and you worked closely with a celebrity. Um, there's no reason why you can't talk about that now. Today, it might be I don't know this time two years ago, and why not? There's absolutely no no problem once you have their permission to do so. Okay, thank you very much. With more here, right? Yeah. Can yeah. independent brands contact magazines directly? Recomp competitions, their average cost for one month's intensive campaign, and what's the average cost for one month's intensive campaign to hire a PR agency? Oh, okay. I think there's two, is there two questions there? Yeah, there's kind of two oh, there's questions two here. Three. Yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to streak three under the wire here. Hold on. It's, so breaking it down, it's can yeah. independent brands contact magazines directly? We contact yes, they can. Yes, they can. Absolutely. You can contact a magazine at any time. No problem. They, they are so delighted to hear from brands. And I'm doing myself out of business here, but that's okay. <laughs> but no, it's, it's, it's absolutely, yes, you can pick up the phone and ring the magazines and pitch in. Like Women's Way now love competitions. They also love stories um, and also recipes or 
how to pair pieces or step-by-step -step guides as to how to maybe sew at home or something like that. They love all of that. They, they, all of the magazines are very open to anyone phoning them. Yes, absolutely. Okay, and there was a question that's probably quite difficult to answer. The average cost for one month's intense campaign? We don't, we don't do anything for a month. I'm okay. sorry, um, and I'll tell you the reason why. Sorry, just to explain. Um, if, for example, a brand, so sometimes we, we talk to brands, we've been talking to some brands over the last, say, six months to a year, and it's still, we're still talking to them. Um, and, and the reason is, is they're maybe not ready yet to, to jump onto the PR um, sort of uh, um, work space at the moment. They're just not ready. And that's fine. Our door is always open for whenever they are. But the reason that we would never work with anyone for a month is because it's too short. What will happen is if we start off, say, on the 1st of May, um, we pull together a press release or a marketing campaign, depending on what, what it's, their brand is about. By the time that release goes out and the month suddenly has gone, the, the journalist may not have featured it yet. The campaign hasn't had time to kick off. You need to give it at least four months. So we would we would never we would never work with with unfortunately anyone for for a month. The only thing we would do is we would do a short term, quick um, maybe um, digital piece for them, which we could pull together and we could pull a really you know and we pulled very interesting pieces, whether it's an event, we've done one-off events, or we've done one-off uh, digital campaigns for clients. Um, but we need to look at what they're trying to achieve, what their key objectives are, so that we are meeting those key objectives. But yeah, get them to, they can email me, no problem, and I can help them and give them advice on, on what to do and, and possibly how much I can give some sort of indicative fee as to what that would cost. That's great. We've no had problem. a couple of questions now from the uh, fashion and accessories uh, sector, and I'd like to now represent the homeware and gift. Yeah. Um, would a stylist style homeware and gift for yeah. a photo shoot as well? Yes, we, we've worked with, um, and I'm sorry, I probably did mention fashion probably more than I did the others, but we work with different sectors, and, and, and my background I mean I set up this business 16 years ago so over the last 16 years I've seen you know um, obviously so many different sectors work um, with with journalists so for example um, homewares and um, we work with with um, interior number of interior brands um, so styling yes absolutely um, stylists and magazines all want to hear about homewares we we have worked with over the years you may I'm sure you're familiar with a brand called Kath Kidston, who are huge in Asia and, 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 and big in the UK. They had a store here. I'm not so sure if they do anymore. But um, again, a lot of the journalists wanted the Kath Kidston, you know, picnic baskets for a shoot, maybe down in Paris Court, where the shoot was about clothing, but yet the picnic basket was there um, on the picnic rug and they got credits for that. So you can get your brand your um, homewares brand um, included in a shoot and get the mention for free. So it's contacting the stylists in the magazines and saying, look, this is, this is my brand. This is who I am. This is what I'm about. So if it is uh, wooden bowls or if it's um, a lighting brand or if it's um, ceramics, um, absolutely no reason why you can't knock on their door and they will consider your product for a shoot in the future for free. Okay, yeah. that's excellent. I also have someone here who's happy to um, forward a, a press release. So we, I mean, we could maybe deal with that later. Sure. If, if we're looking on, on mentoring on that basis or whatever. Sure. Yeah. Um, I have a kind of a logistics question here yeah. on, yeah, do you have to uh, double line sp use double line spacing for the content of a press release? No. 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 Okay. Okay. No, no um, need. And, and I just think it's really important to mention as well, years and years and years ago, I know when I was starting out, um, even before I set up this business, I was with L'Oreal and I always remember um, being told way back at the beginning, your press release should be written in New Times Roman font. You don't need to worry about that. Your press release can be written in any font once it's legible. Um, it doesn't need to be double spaced. Um, it just needs to be clear. Usually no lower than 12 um, font size. And if you can, 
uh, bullet point in the editor's notes, which is the very bottom of the press release, always have the editor's notes, which is called the boilerplate, which basically is a recap of what you've mentioned above in the main body of the press release. And what's really important is that they mention the pricing, as I said earlier, but where the products are available. Make that really strong, whether it's online or well, retail stores are closed at the moment, but you know it's important to mention, mention the availability at and your contact details, or if you're using an agency, put their details. But you know, you put your own details at the bottom at the moment, and 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 that is making it very easy then for the journalist to contact you should she, he or she have a question. Jenny, I have one more. Yeah, uh, and, and thank you for your patience. For no, this. not at all. This is just Outside really, no, it's fantastic. I, it's great. No, it's really interesting. Right. Here's a, here's a good one. Uh, would you recommend Instagram for o an older demographic for craft? How old? My age? <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, uh, over 35? Uh, I, I think you, I think, that, I'll tell you why. I think Instagram is, I, I, I'm on Instagram, but I wouldn't be as, I suppose, look, I, I have, I have teenagers there on Instagram. I have, I mean, obviously my team and here we use Instagram all the time because of our, our business. And um, once you have, if this person has really super high resolution, beautiful images, then I would use Instagram because think about it. Um, if, for example, their audience are young um, millennials, um, maybe they're planning a wedding or whatever, they're going to be their audience. They're going to be their customers. So, so there's no reason why that particular company shouldn't use um, Instagram for, as well as obviously Facebook, maybe and Twitter. But I would definitely recommend if they have super very smart images, both lifestyle, which means that there's a picture of, of their product maybe um, sitting on a table with a family around it, or it's um, maybe taken on outside on the grass or beautifully taken images. Once you have beautiful images, yes, there's no reason why you can't use them on Instagram. We've worked you hard, Jenny, this afternoon. No, no, they keep them coming. It's no I, problem. I'm delighted. I really, really like to thank you. It was really, really super. I'm getting a load in saying that great seminar. Thank you very much for the information. All very helpful. Hold on, I might have a couple more questions. Yeah, here. no, go for it. Yeah, um, no, great. Yeah, yeah that's. I, so, I'm glad I didn't have couple, to. A couple of yeah. people asking for your presentation. No um, I want to ensure that, that that happens. And everyone has your contact details. People can come back to me. Um, if they have questions and I'd like to thank you Jenny for joining us today and I'd like to thank all of the craft and designers and uh, makers who joined us today and I'd just like everyone to spare a moment for the Helsel family because Rudolf Helsel passed away on Saturday night and he would have been a good friend of everyone. Okay. Oh, okay. Yes. Thank and listen, so Emer, thank you so much, and to um, the Crafts Council. I'm delighted, absolutely an honour to be here. And again, any other questions, please feel free to give me a call. Delighted, and thank you, everyone, Not for listening. To thank me. you very much. <laughs> Thanks. Bye -bye. Okay. Bye bye.